What's up all my subscribers and watchers on YouTube? It's me, Jacob, with another video. My first video of the new year, 2019. Woo! I uh, hope it'll be a great year. I got a lot of things planned uh, for, my, for my new YouTube channel. More movie reviews. Hopefully some more TV reviews as well and vlog videos. Pretty much stuff that I've wanted to do on my channel. I want to try to tackle a wide variety of stuff in the entertainment industry that I really, really like, uh, whether it's stuff of the past or current favorites. Uh, so I, I can't wait to try to expand my channel this year. That's probably my big New Year's resolution for the channel. But with 2018 coming to, to a close, I decided today I will show off my Blu-ray and DVD haul for the last month of 2018. All the stuff that I purchased movie-wise in 2018. Uh, some of which were stuff I actually bought on Black Friday, but I had bought them as Christmas presents uh, for family members, so I didn't want to ruin the surprise for those people, so I will put those on this video. Yeah, so I got a lot of movies to show off. Uh, first thing I'm going to show off, oh man, I missed it. I'm actually going to reveal pop figures on this collection too. I do collect pop figures like a lot of movie fan YouTubers I see. I really like this, the look of these pop figures. They're pretty neat to collect. I found this one on sale at Best Buy for $2.99. I figured I'm going to share some love for this one. It's a controversial pick. I picked up Rose from The Last Jedi, the most hated character from that movie. I like Rose. I'm proud of liking Rose. I like this character. One action the character does at the end, I'm, it's still hard for me to get behind, but just... The backlash of this character I find so ridiculous. I especially hated the backlash this actress got on Instagram from trolls that forced her to delete her account. I just thought that was so wrong and so cruel. I hate it when fans do that. They harassed, first they harassed Jake Lloyd, then they harassed the guy that voiced Jar Jar Binks and now killing Marie Tran. I mean, you can dislike the characters all you want, but... Man, harassing the actors who play them is just uncool. I'm sorry, that's just not cool. So yeah, I like this Rose character. And this figure's pretty neat too, so... $2.99, definitely a good price. Alright, now we're on to the movies. First, I bought a couple Christmas movies I like to watch. The first one I blind picked because I hadn't seen it and it looked neat. I bought Krampus. Krampus is a Christmas film that came out a couple years ago. It's from the director of Trick or Treat. Uh, the Halloween film that was really entertaining. Krampus is a Christmas horror movie, but it's kind of styled more like Joe Dante's Gremlins with a dash of Home Alone. Of course, it tackles a German... A uh, legend about this evil demon named Krampus who attacks people that stop believing in Santa Claus. I think it's a fun little movie. I love the atmosphere of the film. It's definitely fun on a visual standpoint. Uh, Michael Daltrey's got this really neat flack. I think he could be the next Joe Dante on a creative standpoint. I think there's flack that the characters of this film are very unlikable, but I'm pretty sure that's the point here because the whole premise of this film is Krampus giving, you know, uh, hateful people their comeuppance. So yeah, I had fun with this one. It's definitely a darker Christmas film. I don't know if, I don't know if it's one I'd show to kids that love Christmas, but I guess, I guess if you want kids to keep the spirit of Christmas alive with the whole Santa Claus thing, yeah, d definitely scare them out with Krampus, I guess. <laughs> uh, the second Christmas movie I picked up, I had these on DVD, but the DVDs were showing their age. They were older DVDs. 
So I say, oh, for the right price, I'll pick up the Blu-ray, and I found a good price at Best Buy. Home Alone 1 and 2. I like both of these movies, especially the first one. The first one's just a classic. 2 is kind of a, a rehash of the first with the New York setting, but it's still watchable in some regards. Some of the rehash stuff I'm not a fan of, but... Then you got Tim Curry in there, and Tim Curry's just amazing in that film. I would love to die. <laughs> but I, I enjoy watching these films around the holiday season. They're good films. I might, maybe I can review one of these next season. I don't know. I, I like to have a good variety of Christmas movies uh, that I can review each holiday season. I don't want to re review them all on YouTube in just one year because that kind of takes away the fun. Christmas is the best holiday. Uh, the next movie I picked up, actually I didn't buy this one. I actually got this as a birthday present. Uh, my sister gave this one to me. It's uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The most controversial film in this franchise. It's kind of like The Last Jedi of Jurassic Park, if you think about it. There were those who really loved it. There were those who really hated it. The only difference is there's no toxic fan base. Uh, most reviews I've seen on this film are really respectful of differing opinions. Oh, man, I wish Star Wars was like that. <laughs> As for me... I really like this film. Uh, I found it to be probably the most ambitious of... Uh, the Jurassic World or Park films. I think it's probably the best directed of the films since when Spielberg was in charge with the first two films. Probably the best tension since the first. There, there were some moments that did have me on the edge of my seat. And I think having J.A. Bayona, who directed horror films in the past, I think was a smart move. Um, not without its issues, like all the Jurassic films, characters make stupid decisions. There's, I mean, uh, there's this one twist subplot involving cloning that comes out of nowhere and they just brush it off as soon as they bring it up. I. Uh, I think it's an interesting twist, but if they had explored it more, I think it probably would have been handled better. There's also a, an intern character named Franklin, who's like the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. <laughs> this character who goes on the adventure, who's afraid of everything, <laughs> and he goes on an island that's about to explode. <laughs> so why bring him? Uh, a lot of people hated the uh, final minutes. I think the final minutes was what ruined the movie for them. Um, yeah, without ruining it, it was a stupid decision on the character's part. But I can, but at the same time, considering what they try to do with the twist, I can kind of see where she was coming from. It might have been the weakest part of the movie. However, the the thing that they left off on in Fallen Kingdom has potential for a good, satisfying third installment. So, or technically six installment, third for Jurassic World. I hope I hope Goldblum has a larger role in the next one. I was a little disappointed. He's only in the film for like two minutes, and Goldblum's like the best thing human wise in this franchise. So hopefully Colin Trevorrow will do that in the next film. Next one was a movie I actually purchased on Black Friday, but I bought it as a Christmas present. This is actually one I picked up for my mom. It's A Quiet Place. It's a weird one for me to pick up for her. She's not a big fan of horror movies, but I think she'll like this one. It's not as... I don't think it's traumatizing, scary, it doesn't revolve around like intense gore or anything, she's not a big gore person, but this one is kind of Hitchcockian level suspense, and I, I think she'll enjoy this one. Obviously, you know, it stars Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, uh, John Krasinski's first time directing. I love this film when I saw it in theaters. It had some amazing use of sound design, and I really 
I really got into the family drama in this. I think that was, uh, I think that was more satisfying than the, uh, you know, the scare factor of this movie, because you're, you buy into this family, and the struggles they're going through in this, uh, really intense situation, because they can't make any noise, or else they'll be slaughtered by mysterious aliens. Yeah, this is a great movie. I think I heard a sequel to this was coming out. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if A Quiet Place warrants a sequel, but... I think Krasinski's directing it again, so if they figure out a way to expand upon uh, its world building and prove it's more than just a cash grab, I'll definitely go see it. Next one was a movie that my sister bought as a Christmas present, and it was a movie, again, it was another movie my mom really liked. Uh, it's Ocean's 8. Uh, the spin-off of sorts of the Ocean franchise. I like that it's actually in the same continuity as the uh, male-centric Ocean films with George Clooney, the Soderbergh films. I do think that there were some missed opportunities here with this one. Like, okay, I'm going to have to bring some spoilers on this one. So if you haven't seen Ocean's 8, just skip a few minutes. I don't like that they killed off Clooney character. They wrote the character off as dead, and I thought that was a missed opportunity. They should have had, they should have had it to where he was still living, and they were, of course, Bullock supposed to play the sister. Maybe they were, maybe they were not on speaking terms or something, which is why he never saw her in the other films. And maybe they they do something at the end where he shows up, makes a surprise cameo, and they tease a future movie where the siblings team up or something. Looney and Bullock, they're like peanut butter and jelly. They work so well together. I mean, have you seen Gravity? <laughs> Man, I wish they had Julia Roberts in this film too. I mean, she, she was one of the scene stealers in the original trilogy. I mean, even in 12, which 12 I thought was an underwhelming installment, Julia Roberts had the best moments in that film. Why didn't they bring her in this? Oh, uh, well, that said, it's still a fun movie. I actually do like this cast. Uh, I actually think the some of the scene stealers, uh, were, I would say Sandra was good, Kate Blanchett. The scene stealer was probably Aquafina. She had a great year this year between this and Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, even Rihanna is not that bad. I, Hadn't been a fan of her acting in some of her films. Battleship, no. Home, ah. Eh. I mean, she's not bad in this one. I think she she works with her limitations here and just does what she does best. And actually, she did have some solid laughs. It's it's a it's kind of a frustrating film, but I think it's still a good, watchable, entertaining film. The best one though is still Ocean's Eleven. Uh, with the original cast. I like it's it's hard topping that one. That one's just great. Next one was a, another Black Friday purchase. I picked this one up for my dad. And it's Dunkirk. This was one of my favorite movies of 2017. It's Christopher Nolan's latest film. Definitely more ambitious for him. This is uh this is him directing a uh war picture based on true events. His previous films have either been, you know, blockbusters or art house films. So it's neat seeing him tackle a different genre that was uh, out of his comfort zone. This one is one of his shorter films. Most of his films are like two, two and a half, sometimes up to three hours. And this one's an hour forty five minutes. So it just it's just a gripping film. Uh, showing the heroism of these uh, brave heroes in combat. Uh, yeah, some have complained of the lack of character development, but I don't think that was Nolan's intent. I think his intent was just to create a gripping war picture. And in that regards, he did a phenomenal job. I think this was like my... It, it was in my top three favorites of 2017 that I saw. Definitely a great one. I, and of course, 
uh, Jamie and I, we saw this on the IMAX screen, and that was a treat. That was This is the only Nolan film I have seen on IMAX, and it was phenomenal. I don't know how well it's going to be replicated at home, but I mean, I've got that sound bar now, which that sound bar is just great. So it'll be close, I think. Uh, next movie is a movie I got for Christmas uh, by Jamie. And this is a movie I was searching for on Black Friday because they had it on sale. But by the time I got to the stores, they were all sold out. But Jamie managed to find the, the steel book of this. And that is The Greatest Showman. And this is, this is a big deal for me because I don't collect that many steel books. Uh, the steel books are so expensive. And a lot of the movies that I see in the stores on Steelbook are movies are already owned. So why would I buy a Blu-ray I already own just to get a neat Steelbook? So if I see a movie I don't have that has a cool Steelbook, maybe. But the only two Steelbooks I have are this and E.T. Uh, Greatest Showman. It's an interesting movie. Uh, a lot of critics seem to hate this film. Uh, from romanticizing history. And yeah, I'm not going to lie, it does gloss over the darker aspects of P.T. Barnum's life. And it definitely feels sensationalized. But I do think it's styled as a fantasy film. And in that regard, I think this movie's pretty great, actually. Uh, I really love this film. Yeah, I, it, it's got issues. It definitely has all the basic storytelling tropes in the musical genre, but they're, they're tropes that work. You know, where the, you know, the band of misfits gather together, uh, put on a show, and you know, make some do some crowd pleasing moments. That's something that had been done since the genre's inception, and I'm glad that they you know, brought that template back for a modern audience. And I'm glad to see this movie went over well. The soundtrack is amazing. Uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of these songs are still earworms. I've seen this movie twice now. I have quite a few songs off the soundtrack that I've you know, purchased off of iTunes. Uh, I think my favorite, it, it's a toss up between The Greatest Show and This Is Me. They're both fantastic. And I'm glad to see Hugh Jackman doing more musical roles uh, between this and Les Mis. And obviously since he's bound out of Wolverine, I'm hoping he does more. Because that's his other strong talent too. Of course he's a great action star too, but he's also a good musical star. And The Greatest Showman is excellent in that regard. Uh, next movie is one I picked up uh, for After Christmas, during an After Christmas sale. Uh, finally completing the MCU collection for now is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Probably my least favorite of the three MCU films that came out in 2018, but it's still a good one, especially coming off of the emotional highs of Infinity War. This is just a fun, lighthearted adventure that... Uh, work, it, it works as kind of a sci-fi B-movie, kind of a big budget sci-fi B-movie, and I think it works. I don't think it's as good as the first, uh, the first one, considering the production problems, you can still see some of the Edgar Wright influences on that film, even though he left. Uh, Peyton Reed is still a confident director, and you see more of his confidence as a filmmaker with this film. I think the only reason uh, this one's lower is I don't really find the villains all that memorable. Uh, they, they try to expand upon one character, I think the ghost character, and which has a backstory and everything, but they don't flesh her out enough for me to get invested. Uh, as far as... As far as action goes, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of creative chase sequences. The Wasp, of course, Evangeline Lilly, she is excellent. She's kind of the scene stealer of this movie. Yeah, so I'm really curious where uh, they go with this. Uh, I wasn't expecting uh, the, the end credit scene. The, the whole movie was fun. If any end credit scene reminds you, oh yeah, we just had Infinity War. Uh-oh, what's going to happen with these characters in the endgame? Ooh. So, yeah. 
great time to be alive if you're a fan of superheroes. The MCU is just excellent. That's like one of the, probably the best movie franchise. Oh, uh, one of the, or one of the best movie franchises up there. It might be the most consistent. Star Wars is still my favorite franchise, but uh, the MCU has been the most consistent as of late. Star Wars hit that one snag with Solo, but I'm still excited for episode nine. Uh, next movie I picked up, this one was four ninety nine dollars at an after Christmas sale at Best Buy. The Grand Budapest Hotel, a Wes Anderson film. This is actually one of my favorite Wes Anderson films. It's definitely one of the most surreal films he's ever done. Very original. Obviously has a great cast as always. Uh, Standout, of course, being that uh, Bell Boy kid who apparently he also played Flash in Spider-Man Homecoming. So I'm glad to see he's still getting some work. Uh, Ray Fiennes is really good here. And of course you have some you know, supporting performances. Bill Murray and Jeff Goldblum and uh, Tilla Swinton, Harvey Keitel. A lot of great people involved in this film. Very entertaining. Definitely some of the best use of aspect ratio changes. A lot of times people will do different ratios within the same scene and it gets very distracting. Definitely looking at Transformers The Last Night, he, which made Michael Bay look like an incompetent director. But Wes Anderson, uh, he frames a ratio in different aspects of the story, not really within the same scene. And it works on a visual level here. It's definitely one of my favorite films. I think it was my favorite Wes Anderson film until I saw Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs is now my favorite. But I still have a couple more West films I still hadn't seen, like Royal Tenenbaums and Bottle Rocket. But right now, this and Isle of Dogs are probably my two favorites. Uh, last thing I picked up, again, this was a Black Friday gift. I picked this one up for my sister for Christmas. And it's a big TV series they had on sale. The complete series of Avatar The Last Airbender on DVD. I love this show. This is a show that aired on Nickelodeon in the mid 2000s. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan adapted this into a film in 2010. That movie is a train wreck. It's the worst movie he's ever made. I think it, he does. He did not. He did not do justice. This great show. Uh, it's a great show. It's styled like an anime, but it still has the look of an American animated production it does a great job of world building it's got iconic characters the action sequences are phenomenal and they would work great even on the big screen even though this is a tv series um it tackles a lot of heavy themes for a kid's show and there's just a lot of great stuff in here the humor there's great humor there's great drama there's great action in this it's easily one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. It, it's hard for me to watch TV shows due to my schedule. It's hard for me to get invested in a feature series or a full series because it's kind of hard to get all the episodes watched and binged and then try to keep a memory of all the characters and all the episodes. But Avatar is great. I can't wait to revisit this again. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the spin-off Legend of Core. I heard that show was good too, so definitely let me know in the comments if that's a show worth watching. Because Avatar is pretty great. I hope they make a, another Avatar, the last Airbender movie, a rebooted movie. Definitely keep M. Night away from it. He needs to just stick to psychological dramas, because that's what he's best at, like The Sixth Sense and Split, and hopefully Glass. <sighs> they need they need somebody more they need somebody like Peter Jackson or somebody to handle this. Okay, so that was all the movies I picked up at the end of 2018 in December. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh hear me talk about all these movies that I picked up. Uh what are movies you picked up in December? Uh, whether they were uh Christmas gifts or movies you 
uh, purchase from your wallet. So uh, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I got more content coming from you soon. Hopefully all throughout 2019. I hope you all have an amazing day, a happy new year, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! Whoa, whoa, whoa.